me start off by asking, you know, uh, Mr. Singh, at the beginning of this year, you take on a new role. Uh, you have been associated with the with the uh, group, but now it's more of a hands-on role as the chairperson of the Anand Group. So if I may ask you, you know, uh, and this is at a time when we are emerging from the pandemic-led uh, highly challenging phase. So uh, what would you count as the key learnings and the new best practices, you uh, know, both in the business and maybe on the as an individual also that you have picked up during this phase and which you will you know, which have already started executing or plan to execute very soon. So uh, you know, firstly, being associated with the Anand Group is something that, of course, has been there from the very moment I probably came into this world. Uh, I have had the great pleasure and <laughs> to be uh, in some way or the other associated and. Uh, very closely, I would say, involved ever since I was born with what was happening in the factories and with the larger organization and their families right from inception. Uh, that is the way a family business is built up. And at least, especially in our case, I'm being an only child, it was very clear that I would be uh, inducted from a very young age. Most of my holidays and most of my times were spent in one or another one of our facilities and their surrounding residential areas. Uh, we have many, uh, you know, sort of Anand uh, residencies around our factories. And I, I spent a lot of time there growing up, which was great because I got to know the people and were in and out of a factory and never had a fear of it and never was uh, really um, in any way felt that it was out of uh, the no normal for me. So, you know, definitely being associated always. Um, been working now in the group for almost 15 years. So in different uh, areas and in different, uh, I would say, um, departments and, and going up the ad ladder. Of course, the last five years have been, you know, very closely driven between our uh, CEO, Mr. Chopra, who, who uh, retired in January and has moved up to the group supervisory board. So we still have him uh, with us. And I have, of course, as you say, taken on uh, an even more active role. So, you know, giving you that background, basically this last year, which has been an incredibly challenging year, uh, I was obviously working very closely with him and with our group supervisory board and our executive team to make sure that we were, you know, on top of uh, what has hit us in the entire industry and how to really navigate that storm. And I mean, the learnings from that for all of us are really the same. But one of the most interesting things that I, I want to first mention is how the entire industry came together. And, you know, being a part of ACMA and CIM has been an incredible learning. That has been learning number one during this pandemic. How, I don't know about other industries, but certainly the auto component industry came together to support each other in sharing best practices, sharing doubts and fears, and really, really coming together. And I can't thank, uh, our current uh, president of ACMA, which is Deepak Jain and his entire team more. It has been amazing the amount of interactions we've had with our OEMs, creating a really open communication and learning from each other with our past presidents as well. Um, you know, besides that, I think the learning has been for all of us that cash is king, to conserve cash, to make sure that we are uh, managing with uh, you know an incredible V-shape, we, we had a steep decline and uh, an inability to, to really have any business. And then of course, an incredible steep recovery, uh, which is great news, but it has its own challenges. Supply chain has gone through an incredible challenge. And again, I would say our tier two and tier three have supported us and supported the industry in also remaining on top of their game whilst um, this pandemic hit all of us, including them. And everyone has stepped up to, to really make sure that they can uh, not have a customer come under any stress at all. Um, I'd say also communication, you know, like you and I are communicating today on this new form, an incredible learning curve on how we can all communicate and communicate better and be available. Um, I think uh, communication has been really key, both internally and externally during this phase to create um, you know, comfort and not have uh, a sense of uh, uh, you know, anxiety amongst the, the teams, both for the customer and for, for our own employees. 
Um, for me personally, travel and the lack of has actually been very interesting. Maybe we realize we all travel just a little too much and we've all looked into besides travel, uh, but also including travel, you know, new, new ways of functioning. Um, of course, we miss the, the personal touch and meeting people, but I'm sure that will slowly come back and there will be a good medium and we will do both things. Um, I think for us, our employees' well-being and a holistic approach to, towards the mental and physical health of our employees has been also a very big learning, which I'd like to talk about as we go along um, and creating an environment where people through a very difficult time also you know, take care of themselves and center themselves um, and not just have the, the pressures of, of work. Um, of course, on, um, on a more forward looking side, automation and digitization has taken a, a really a center stage for us too. Like for many other companies, we see the, the need of course to optimize a, a great deal. Um, and of course, digitize in a big way across uh, both the manufacturing foot, uh, footprint and the, uh, I'd say, review, me review mechanisms across the group. So those are some of the, the learnings, of course. Right. And uh, Mr. Singh, and, as you rightly said, your association with the group has been since almost right from your birth. Uh, but now, as you take on a new role at the start of this year, you know, as the chairperson of the group, uh, you know, if I may ask you, what are the three top three short term and mid or long term goals that you have set for yourself uh, and the group? So, you know, um, when you take over in, a, in an organization that has been running for 60 years, um, there is a, there is obviously going to be a lot of pluses and minuses because you have an incredibly strong culture and uh, a backbone to work with, which is an enormous plus. But of course, that also brings sometimes a rigidity. Um, and I think my short term my short term aim would be to create a more agile uh, company and a more agile um, way of functioning. Um, besides that, to look at certain sustainability indexes and. Again, I, I have to go back to digitization. I think that's a short term and a, a, and a very quick and near uh, goal that we need to achieve. Needless to say, you know, there's so much value and so much energy and so much experience amongst our team that um, settling in this new organization team is also one of my short term goals to have a smooth transition and, um, you know, have everybody firing at all cylinders. So, of course, that's that's there as well. Um, I would say midterm, you know, we have a lot of opportunities in the EV space and we have a lot of opportunities uh, in the electronic space coming up with both our existing partners who we value greatly and also with new partners possibly. And of course, the driving further into the electronics and EV space is definitely a medium term goal, I'd say. And of course, a long term goal would be um, very much to, to look at a more diverse group, both on a diversity index. Um, but also in terms of product, in terms of business lines, and certainly and definitely uh, probably saying that I'd like to double the group at the very right. minimum. So I think there's, there's a few different uh, uh, things there. And of course, as an overall, you know, we, we do hold ourselves um, very carefully in terms of a governance structure. And as we grow, I would like that, of course, to continue and the professionalism that exists within the Anand Group today um, to, to remain and to have our professional management feel that they can really, um, you know, go to the top and sky is the limit. Right. Sky is the limit. And uh, towards, uh, as mentioned, uh, doubling the group size. Now, uh, yeah. what the kind of timeline? And towards that, you know, I mean, you may perhaps also look at uh, organics uh, yes, and what uh, could they be. Yeah, so, um, you know, I think our, uh, our group strategy is, is evolving as I take over now, and it would probably be only fair for me to give that information internally before externally. But certainly, you know, in the next uh, uh, five years, we hope to make some serious impact at a group level on the overall size and scale and on the electronics and EV space. Um, of course, uh, inorganic growth is very much on the tables because that without that, I don't think we could achieve those numbers or that growth spot. 
Um, but certainly we have within our basket of a very varied products already some possibilities of organically moving into some of those spaces with our existing partners. So both are on the cards and um, I think you will hear of some announcements in the near future and within the next six months. It's an increasingly disruptive and uh, unpredictable times that we are in, uh, not to mention the economic uncertainties as well, which adds to the, which add to the challenge. Uh, are you reorganizing any of the principles or approaches or adopting new strategies at the, at the very fundamental level to ensure a sustainable group uh, or sustainable growth for the Anand on group? Um, so, as I mentioned, you know, uh, Anand Group is at the core uh, built on the principles of partnership and people. And those principles are not changing. Um, we, we do believe very much that through partnership we can be stronger, and through partnership we are stronger, and we have a legacy of having um, both very strong partnerships and growing partnerships. So I do think uh, in terms of adopting a strategy, Anand Group will grow through partnership. Having said that, um, the change that you asked me to an approach or a principle will be that we will also grow our wholly owned businesses um, to equal degree, I hope. And that is very much a strategy that both myself and my husband, Jason, who's also um, you know, taken over in m and and uh, strategy in the group will also be pushing very much. Uh, I think it's that there's a lot to be done and the, the human capital in India is just quite incredible. So we would look very much at growing our wholly owned business as well. And in that, um, you know, looking at the footprint of Gabriel and really seeing what we can do with our crown jewel there. Um, besides that, you know, I, in terms of a strategy, I think, you know, we, we also will look at some um, restructuring and that is something that is, um, you know, there to prevent uh, any kind of risk and really ensuring that, uh, you know, our appetite for growth is there and is protected. Um, and I think uh, those things will be looked at in the near future as well. When you say a restructuring, uh, would it also include maybe because of the uh, uh, changing times, maybe uh, exiting any any of the uh, product lines and uh, getting into new ones would that also include a part of the restructuring yeah absolutely as i said you know i think we're, we all know now that um, ev is here to stay the government is fully behind it and we can see it coming in the two and three wheeler space much faster than in other segments but it will definitely come in other segments and is here is a reality and hence uh, i would definitely say that we will be going into the ev space um, and into the related electronic space as well. Okay. So, uh, uh, therefore, uh, do you think uh, of the uh, key mega trends as the acronym says, CASE, uh, Connected Autonomous uh, uh, Shared Mobility Electrification? Do you think electrification, when it comes to the Indian landscape, would be the lead uh, mega trend uh, that would kind of influence uh, business decision of a large uh, tier one group like Anand? Um, yeah, I think, you know, aut autonomous driving is, uh, is probably, in my opinion, a little further away in India than uh, the electronics space per se. I think, uh, you know, the, the design of the cars in India, whether it is uh, Kia or Maruti or, or Tata Motors is, is already developed so much that I think the electronics is, is here and is coming and every, every one of the OEMs is going to have us hopefully as all suppliers uh, rise up to that as well. So I definitely think that is, is a strategy. Uh, I do think that in the um, autonomous space may take a little longer, but having said that, it may be slow to begin, but it, it will come as well, uh, of course, um, especially in the high-end cars. Uh, we also, as a group, are betting on light weighting. We do believe that um, you know, light weighting is going to be really key for the future. And we had signed a, um, an agreement with FAR UK to, to look at light weighting. And I think you may know that already. And it was talked which about- Which you had announced at the Auto Expo. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it, it's taking a little time, but I do believe that the, light, that the, the redesigning and the light weighting of certain elements within the cars uh, is a game changer in terms of consumption. 
So I really think that will be something that will will do well, and and we definitely have a fir first mover advantage there, uh, and are connected with all our OEMs on it. Uh, we also launched Mazaro from which is a Belgian JV. Um, again, you know, bringing innovative solutions suited for reducing emissions. So these are these are some spaces that we think, you know, are, are more innovative and and will come as well. Besides the uh, the direct approach of EV and um, electronics, which, which also, of course, we have a very sharp focus on. Um, uh, besides that, you know, uh, we do think that the government's energies as well on the EV will eventually bring it faster to India than we think. Uh, so, you know, I think there is a sense that the next five years will bring massive change in this area. And I think the consumer has become far more um, conscious of what they're driving and how they're driving it and uh, you know emissions and sustainability post covid especially at the anand uh, group uh, you know, set up the automotive growth council uh, to kind of you know uh, to explore uh, and uh, lay out some long term plans for sustainable growth uh, what are the key outcomes of it i believe uh, the, uh, the, uh, the alliance with the FAR group is one of them, if I'm not wrong. Any other yeah. uh, outcomes that uh, you have already uh, kind of no, identified? Um, yeah, so I think Mazaro and FAR are two outcomes. Um, we do have a new uh, JV that we'll be signing later this month um, in the EV space, and uh, I can't quite give you that information yet, but I think there will be a number of uh, new joint ventures on the EV front that will come out as a as a kind of um, you know work from that. But also, I think the Automotive Growth Council helps Anand to really uh, remove our daily sort of work and what what needs to happen as business unusual to really concentrating on more strategic and growth matters. And I think it gives it a a focus and gives it a direction which. Um, you know, cannot be there in, in the day-to-day -day management of, of the operations, which is, is really super hands-on. So I think it gives a lot of focus and clarity to, um, to that exercise. And that was the aim of creating it. And I think it will have even a sharper focus going forward post-January uh, post and has uh, a lot of attention on it now. So It was a, a pleasure talking to you and, uh, and uh, best wishes once again on your new role and uh, wishing you and all at Anand Group all the very best on behalf of Autocar Professional. And thanks once again for sparing your time for this wonderful conversation in this episode of the Autocar Professional Dialogue. Take care and thank, stay safe. Thank you very much. And uh, all I would just like to end by saying is that diversity and inclusion of all, uh, whether it is gender neutral or whether it is um, people from different walks of life is something that we really believe in at Anand and we welcome all nationalities and all people of all kinds. Thank you so much, Mandina.